to Mindset Meets Mastery with Arlene Gale. We're talking about the stories we tell ourselves, the mindsets, myths, and misinformation that can hold us back, and then turning our focus to action steps that bring about success mastery in business and life. The goals are to define success on our own terms and to master that success without excuses or apologies. That's, that's how we roll. We're not making excuses or apologies at any time. We're just going to overcome mindsets and begin to master our lives and our business. So today we're talking about your story, specifically writing your story. Because I know there are people out there who have life experience that would benefit other people because there are people still stuck where we were stuck in the past and we've made it further So why would we not want to share what we've learned with those people to help make the world a better place? I mean, that's all that that's my only goal is to make the world a better place. That's it. So um, today we're talking about how to write your story and we're going to talk about the difference between writing your story as fiction or nonfiction. But I want to start with this. Publishers have done research that say that 80% of people in the United States want to write a book. 80%. That's about 325 million people, but 1 million books get published every year. Only 1 million books get published every year. Now I say only and you think that's a huge number. Well, it really is if you're just looking at a 1 million books going on the bookshelf this year. But when you look at it and you compare that 1 million to the 325 million who said they wanna write a book, That's less than one-tenth of one percent of people who actually do write their book. So why? What are the reasons? Well, as I travel around and I do workshops and talk to people, I find that there's a lot of varied reasons, but the most popular reasons are what I call the lack ofs, the lack of time, lack of money, lack of skill, lack of direction. Those are the most common. But I also get that they've got so many ideas rolling around in their heads that they don't know how or where to start. So they don't ever start. There are other people that start writing their book, but then they stop because they really didn't have any kind of clear plan in place. So they got stuck and discouraged and stopped. And we're going to talk about my guest today too about that. Don't let me get away without talking about the difference between pantsters and planners because well, yeah, she's out. Yeah, you can hear her. She's going pantser, pantser. <laughs> uh, so anyway, but <laughs> so when I wrote my first book, Face Forward, Move Forward, and that's the first book I wrote with my name on the front cover, I chose to write about my life's journey as a nonfiction because I wanted to use my story to speak to groups to help people overcome some of the same challenges I had been through. So my book, the short version of my story is, I am a product of multiple generations of abusive alcoholism on one side of the family, and then religion and culture used as a weapon against the women on the other side of the family. So I wanted to write this story about how I was living a life that was breaking this legacy. But I'm going to be honest with you, writing my life story cost me. It cost me relationships, it, it just, it cost me, and I don't want to go into that because that's a real downer. So, but you know what? It also helped lots and lots of people because I've got tons of emails and handwritten cards and letters from readers who have told me so, have been specific about what in my story they could relate to and what they did to move past where they were. Because, you know, your past does not have to define your future. I'm just saying So it's a choice, really, a choice on whether you write your story at all and whether you write it as a nonfiction or a fiction story. So now you know that I am an expert in writing nonfiction stories, but my guest today has done the same thing I've done in using her life to approach other people and change other people's lives and to make a change and make changes in her community. My guest today is C.J. Peterson. She's an expert at writing fiction. She has written her own story in multiple fiction books 
to help heal others and move them forward on their journey. Her motto is, the stories are fiction, but the journey is real. So she also helps fund various nonprofits with the sales of her book. Her positive, bright spirit and her personality shine through as she shares various passions for life in general and her big heart as a writer, speaker, and a podcaster. CJ Peterson is a five-time award-winning author, and she's not new to this. That's why I call her an expert. She's been writing and has been published since 2012. So with that, please help me welcome my special guest, CJ Peterson. Yay! Thank you. Hi, how Happy are you? Here. Thank you for having me on. Well, it's, we always have so much fun because we talk about how we're opposite sides of the same coin. And, you know, if people would just sit down and talk to each other and learn to laugh about the differences, you really kind of find out that you have more in common than not. And I think we're a great example of that. What do you think? Definitely. Um, with you being nonfiction and me being fiction, you being the planner, which gives me hives, um, <laughs> me being the pantser, you know, sit down right by the seat of your pants sort of thing. We kind of play off each other really well. Um, and we, we can give a perspective that can help everybody because we are two sides of the same coin. Okay, so we've got everybody wondering what on earth are they talking about planners <laughs> versus pantsers. So let me bring you in into the writing world and explain. So in the writing world, there are people who are called planners. They plan, they outline. That's the method that I use, especially when we're doing a nonfiction book because most of the books I help people write are to help build business. So if you don't have a business plan, if you're not clear on who your target market is and you know all of that business stuff, then it's really hard to write a powerful and profitable book. So I'm a planner and I teach planning, but CJ Peterson is a? Pantser. I write by the seat of my pants. Basically, I sit down, pray, and just write and start writing. The only thing I keep a running list of is the characters. Uh, for example, there's another gentleman that we did a class together, Aaron Zook. He's a massive planner and, and the fiction side of planner. So it can kind of give you, you can see both sides this way. He sent me character arcs, about 21 pages just for one book of character arcs. Wow. That's just the character arcs. That's not the outline or anything. That's just the character arcs. I sent him back three pages of my notes for all 12 of these books literally only with the characters and their descriptions. And if there's anything specific I needed to know, that's how I write by the seat of my pants. So when you say character arc, you're talking, explain that to um, the listeners, because I believe like you do that we have to have a character arc and nonfiction. People think when you're writing nonfiction that it has to be cold and sterile and boring and it's really not if you're the main character of your story you need to have depth and you need to have personality how do you write a story arc for fiction i don't i'm a pantser <laughs> he does a character um, arc <laughs> Sorry. Um, that's okay he does um what he does is he kind of delves into the character how they operate how they think i'm more of a person who observes people and i see people at their core i grew up army brat so i moved all over the place and so I got to learn to see people at the core and I could see it right away. I could see, you know, whether they were good, whether they were not good, whether we would click, whether we would not click. And so when I go to do my characters, I come up with the main character and then I dive in, I put like their height, their weight, their hair color, their eye color, you know, the basic physical attributes. If there's anything specific I need to know about that character, including their birthday, I give them a birthday and oh well. Wow. It kind of goes along with it and that character I have in mind, I already have that person in, in my brain. And so when I go to write, I just write and the story takes off. And there are some characters that I only meant to be a secondary character for just like a part of the story who end up being in the whole story because that character said, nope, wait, I want more space. And so they push their way into the storyline. I, my general rule is I never go against the character of the character. So when I have multiple characters, for example, in the Holy Flame Trilogy, you're dealing with three sets of firefighter ships. And so there are a lot of characters. Yeah. And the ship itself has a lot of characters. And each of those characters are different. 
that's what a character arc is. You have many different personalities and many different people. You, they're not robots. They're going to react different ways. There's the prankster. There's the person everybody talks to. There's the brain of the group. There's the one who knows pretty much everything, like the godfather. The, you know, each then there's the ones that think they know everything and they really don't. And then there are the space cadets. There are some space cadets and there the newbies. And so that's a character arc. You know, what is this person's personality, basically? Okay, so tell us, how would you classify the genre that you write your stories? <laughs> that's kind of tricky. Um, it's Christian fiction. It's more action, adventure, and suspense with just a little bit of romance. Kind of toss a little bit of that in there. Um, in okay. my books, in the three series, is, and actually this one as well, this last one that came out, Strength From Within, is also part of the series, because I have three series and a standalone. The characters actually cross over storylines, which makes it even more fun for a pantser, because I have to keep everybody straight as they cross over into the different storylines. Okay, so... Tell us a little bit about your life's journey and some of the lessons that you've learned along the way that you use in your characters. Can you give us, tell us a little bit about you first and then connect that with characters in your book. Um, well, like I said, grew up on me, Brett. Um, I also am a domestic violence survivor. I'm not a victim. I'm a survivor. Absolutely. Learned a lot. Um, I've learned, like I said, to see people at their core. A lot of times I'm the person and it's not bragging where people come and talk to me and just out of the blue and kind of dump and that's perfectly fine. I love people fascinate me at their core. You know, what makes them tick? What drives them? What is it that allows them to be different than the person next to them? Okay. And because of that and the many different jobs that I've worked at, you know, kind of growing up, I've been able to get perspectives that not the normal person who you know grew up in a small town or in a city and stayed there would normally have i have more of a world view so tell us about some of the jobs because you've done some really fascinating things at least to me that um you know i know you've been a a former youth youth leader in a church what else have you done years i did that for 18 years teens have changed a lot over the course of 18 years. Mm -hmm. um, I've been landscaper. I've been security officer. I've been counselor. I, there's a lot of things I've done. <laughs> so, Were you a first responder? No, I was an EMT. EMT. They're considered first responders, but EM, first responders are just a slight step down. They're the okay, ones. So it goes, it goes first responder, EMT, paramedic. Okay. But still, to be an ENT, you had to have some specific training, and you probably have some pretty horrific stories of scenes that you've come across, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You kind of gain a little bit of a twisted sense of humor, which is how I was able to write the Holy Flame trilogy. That one has to do with, she's a, the main character is Casey Carter. She's a firefighter paramedic, and there's also some military in there. I call my husband super hubby. He's 24 and a half year Navy vet, and that's where I get a lot of the military experience, and we kind of combine them into that series. Um, the Grace Restored series is police and FBI. While I don't have any of that, I did interview a police officer. I did also have security experience, so kind of slightly in that zone. So I was able to apply some of what I learned with that and also with the officers that I sat down with. Okay, so let me ask you this based on the jobs you've had and the things that you've seen there, based on your personal life experiences and the things that you experienced there, what was the, why would you write your life story as, as fictional characters instead of nonfiction? Can you help us understand the decision process a little bit from your perspective? There's a couple of deciding factors in it. Uh, number one, to protect the guilty and the innocent. Um, <laughs> As you said, you got a little bit of backlash from yours when you published your book, Absolutely. and I didn't want that. Um, number two, I can choose to rewrite the story, the ending. You know, you can't really do that with nonfiction. You have to stick to the storyline. Mm -hmm. When you do fiction, you can take it and turn something that may have been extremely painful and give it a different ending if you choose to. 
I'm in control of that, that storyline. Because sometimes writing things might push me a little bit further than I wanted to go. Uh, for the most part, it, writing for me is therapeutic. And so there are parts of the different stories that I can touch on. And some of them I can give a happier ending to. So do you find that as you're writing and you're writing a, a scenario in your life that was painful and you look back now and you go, duh, I wish I had handled it this way. I would have had a better result. Can you then take that and apply that, that thinking, that 2020 hindsight to the growth of your character in a, any book? Sometimes I do. Um, sometimes I let it go as it played out only because it made me who I am. So it's going to make that character who that character is and how they react and act in a certain situation. All right. So can you give me an example of one of your favorite characters who is like you, but different? That's kind of like asking who your favorite child is. I know it is. <laughs> when I wrote down that question, I had the same thought, but there I, I did it anyway. So pick one. I can tell you the one who's most like me. Okay. And that would be Katie McKenna. And that's the Grace Restored series, the five book series. Okay. Um, she is the one that's most like me. She deals with domestic violence and she overcomes it. And her life takes many drastic turns. Um, a lot of her situations are ones that I'm in. And the irony is it is that sometimes I get people that message me or something and say, well, that's a highly non-realistic situation. And I'm like, well, actually that one is the one that's true. <laughs> you know, yeah. and they, don't, they don't process it because they've never been in that situation. Like no person would react that way. No, actually they did. Yeah. Don't ask me how I know, but I do. Right. So right. that's, that's the grace restored series. And there's five books in that series, right? Correct. And I love the titles. Tell me, tell okay. us the titles. Uh, we have the Grace Restored series. Katie McKenna is the main character in that one. A portion of the proceeds from the Grace Restored series goes to Hope Store, which is a domestic violence shelter in Plano. Okay. There's the Holy Flame trilogy. The main character is Casey Carter. And a portion of the proceeds from that one goes to uh, Airborne Angel Cadets of Texas, who ship packages overseas to the military. Uh, the other series is Divine Legacy series. Uh, the two main characters, basically what I did was Strength from Within, which is a single that I just re-released. The Grace Restored series and the Holy Flame trilogy are actually going on at the same time. Wow. The kids from those books do a 20-year jump, and they're the ones that take over the underlying group, which is Angel, which is available to nurture God's eternal love. They get their assignments from the Archangel, who ships them out in the world to help people. They take over the angels as the new generation. They're passing on the divine legacy, which is why it's called the Divine Legacy Series. And again, of course, the proceeds from that one goes to Airborne Angel Cadets of Texas. And then the standalone book that was just released, um, which is only 99 cents on ebook until October 1st, I'll plug that in there, um, is Stacy Spencer. Stacy Spencer actually comes in the first book of the Grace Restored series and leaves at the third book, but her son comes in the last book of the Divine Legacy series. And so, he's the one that picks up the next series. He's the next generation. Is that he's right? in that next generation. Yep. Okay. He comes in the last book of that series. Um, and a portion of the proceeds from Strength and Within goes to Jenny's Hope, which is a counseling center in Texas. Okay. So I want to take a moment and tell and remind people that CJ Peterson, her books are available on Amazon and there's descriptions and they're all, I like, I like your website because they're all the book series are together mm -hmm. and it's clear where you should start. So tell them where you, what your website is. CJPetersonWrites.com. That's C-J-P-E-T-E-R-S-O-N-W-R-I-T-E-S.com. Dot com and you can see all of her books there. And if you want to talk about or learn about the biggest mistakes writers make when trying to write a nonfiction to use it to build business, you can go to my website, bookwritingbusiness.com. And I have a freebies tab and there's multiple freebies in there, but I also have a free webinar coming up, I think in the next week or so. So register for that. And maybe we can answer some questions about how to write your life story to make the world a better place. So, CJ, let me go back to, um, which was your first series? First one out or first one to read? The first book series that you published. Was the Holy Flame Trilogy. The Holy Flame Trilogy, okay. And um, 
you said that one, some of the proceeds go to the Airborne Angel Cadets of Texas. Right. So tell us again, why did you pick them? What do they do that pings your heart? Uh, well, my sister was actually involved in them and then I was physically involved with them. And what they do is they ship packages overseas to our military and they get things people don't really understand that when the military go over there, a lot of them are sort of forgotten. Uh, some of them don't get packages. Some of them, they have these mattress pads that have been there since the creation of time. They literally are living in metal boxes in some places. And my husband said, you know, sometimes shampoo and soap are hard to find. Mm -hmm. So Airborne Angel Cadets of Texas, they kind of adopt a group and they send them packages throughout the year and kind of just little themes sometimes. And sometimes it's just a matter of sending, you know, goods, you know, find out what they need, even if it's books sometimes, you know, what is it that they need? And I, I love that group. It started with Nancy Carter, my sister Ellen Mano's portion. She's part of it as well. And they're out of Carrollton, Texas, and they do an amazing job. Awesome. Okay. So let's do, let's put a little focus too on the other, the other domestic violence program that your book sales help to support. Talk a little bit about them and why they're, they're important to you. Hope Store is a domestic violence shelter in Plano. Um, they have a residential home as well as different programs. And people don't always understand that it is males and females that are abused. Mm -hmm. uh, the home is for females and their children. And the reason I know that is because I actually went through Hope Store. So they're the ones that helped me get back up on my feet and, you know, gave me some counseling and got me moving in the right direction. So right. I donate a portion to them as well. Awesome. So you're telling your real life story in a fictional way, but you're making a real life difference in other people's lives. I love that. Exactly. You know, it just, it, it closes, opens and closes the circle. So I want to talk a minute about Grace, your Grace Restored series, mm -hmm. because there's five of them. Mm -hmm. And I love the titles, Seasons of Change, mm -hmm. Winter's Verdict, Spring Shadows, Summer Secrets, and Forever Fall. Mm -hmm. Now, did anybody else see a rhyme or reason for those titles? I mean, now, now come on, tell me, how can you write a book series with five titles like that and not have planned it out? Um, the title <laughs> I had, but that was about it. How, how each book ends, I never know when I start them. So when, when you start and finish a book, what you're saying is you hear voices. Basically, I run it. I'm, I'm ADD and I'm a little OCD. So I got lots, lots of little alphabet things going on in my brain. So when I am writing the story, I look at it in my brain as if it's a movie going on. If the scene is boring, I literally delete it and start over. If, you know, the scene has a lot of action and whatnot, or if I even get stuck, sometimes my mind will work on it through the night. And that little twilight portion when you're between sleep and wake is when it works it out. And I grab my phone and do a post-it note and put it in there. And then I go write it when I wake up. Okay. Okay. If you say so, <laughs> if I did that, I would never sleep. It would just, it would keep me awake. Um, so in that same series, Grace um, Restored, mm -hmm. you started with just the main character and mm -hmm. a situation um, usually there's a song that triggers the books. I can probably tell you exactly which ones they are. Uh, oh. Seasons of Change was blown away by Carrie Underwood. Wow. Um, God of Angels Armies was Angels Among Us in the Holy Flame Trilogy. You know, there's different songs that would usually trigger and I keep the playlist going in my head. Music's very powerful and music is stories. Mm -hmm. Go figure. Um, okay, so you have the main character and do you know where she starts and where she ends or you know where she ends and now you're filling out between here and there? What is that process like? Or is it different for every single character and book? I know where they start. Sometimes there's a certain scene that's usually triggered by the song for that book. And then that's, that's what I'm making my goal to get to. But once you get through that scene, you know, it's, to get there and pass that scene is pretty much up in the air, however it comes about. I never know how, like I said, I never know how the books are going to end. I have a target amount of pages and I kind of guess 
but I never know how they're going to end. When I rewrote Strength from With or, yeah, Strength from Within was the very first book I ever published. And when I finished the series, is I reread it and I'm like, oh, this really sucks. So <laughs> I can completely... much happens often in for, with when experienced authors go back and read their first stuff. But Stacy's story needs to be told. So it took me six painful months because I am a pantser. I had to stick somewhat to the characters and somewhat to the storyline because Stacy's in Grace Restored series and her son is in A Chains Broken and the Divine Legacy series. So I had to somewhat stick to the same line, but it was a very thin stick to it. Everything else has been completely changed. And so I had a basic idea on how it had to look, but the rest of it just all went up in the air. And it basically, when I started her and started her on her path, it just went elsewhere. So is Stacy based on your life? No. Nope. <laughs> oh, that was a fast answer. Tell us why. Nope. What's different? Katie, Katie is more the one that's me, honestly. Uh, Stacy is very strongly opinionated. <laughs> Sometimes that gets her in trouble, which it did in this particular Oh, story. it's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Katie kind of eases herself into situations, and that's more what I am. Um, but no, Stacy, like I said, each because I know so m I have met so many people throughout the course of my life, um, I can usually figure kind of when I start the character, kind of fashion it after that person, because I know that person well enough to know how they're going to start. And then, like I said, once it starts, I don't go against the character of the character and the story just takes up on its own. So your character, you know enough about the character's moral compass Mm -hmm. and likes and dislikes and what they've been through you know that up in your head or in your heart either one and you have to stay true to that but the dialogue can change the people who come in and out and impact them can change is that what you're saying yep even even the location like I started Katie in Oklahoma and somehow she ended up in Cleveland so <laughs> you know good for Katie yeah. <laughs> Yes, meeting Nick Locke, who is actually in Strength From Within. So they, like I said, they all kind of strangely intertwine. Well, and, and the point I just made about how the characters interact on each other, you know, is, a, is something that's true in nonfiction, too, because people want to write their story, and then they'll bring somebody in because they want to tell how that person impacted their life. And then they end up in a ditch because, or in another lane headed into oncoming traffic, because now all of a sudden they're telling that person's story instead of just telling enough of that story and how it impacted them and their behavior and their choices. Mm -hmm. So in that way, the storylines are kind of similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said, mine are, there's a lot of realism in the stories. Um, I have enough background of mine and if I don't, for example, I interviewed two, three police officers for the Grace Restored series to make sure that when I wrote about the police officers that it was as, ac it was as accurate as I could get it. I did two male and one female and I did the female on purpose because Katie is a female and she was going into the police force. Okay, so you've been writing for almost a decade. Have you oh my God, seen? I'm serious, it has been. Hasn't I know. I'm sorry to bring that up. No, I feel old. <laughs> it's like I know. Okay, so you've been writing for a while. Um, based on your experience of this little while that you've been writing, how has publishing, publish, or writing? Let's start with writing. Writing fiction stories changed as far as word count and page count and things like that those that people people have these goals like I want to write a certain amount of words per day or words per time sitting down like I said I'm a complete pantser um, the planning gives me hives and so when people talk about word count and stuff I don't really do that I kind of target a certain page number because I know that's about how big the book is going to be um, I'm a little bit different because a lot of writers do go by word count and like, well, how many words does it have? Well, I don't know. I have to look it up and tell you. I don't go by that. I go, I write with my heart. Okay. Um, while the stories are fiction, the journey is real. I write from the heart. If I can get you to laugh and cry in the same book, it is a success to me. Uh, for example, there was a gentleman who's a little bit redneck um, who came and worked on our solar. And I gave him the call to duty. 
he's not normally a reader. He said, but it's because it was your book. I went ahead and read it. He goes, and you made me cry. And I said, yes. And he's like, <laughs> don't take that as a compliment. I said, I made you cry. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> if I can make him cry, then I'm happy. You know, I write them to give people a different perspective that they may not otherwise know. Some people are like, well, when it comes to domestic violence, if somebody hurt me, then there's no way I'd stay. Well, what they don't understand is domestic violence doesn't start that way. Right. It's basically like putting a frog into tempid water and slowly warming it up to all of a sudden crud, you're in boiling water and you don't even know it. It's not like they throw it into hot water and the frog immediately jumps out. And when you see the process and realize the process, it lets somebody else kind of figure it out. And I touch a lot of different subjects. Um, for example, in Forever Fall, it deals with a young teen, 15 year old, who gets pregnant. Parents mm -hmm. wanted her to abort it because they didn't want to ruin the child's life. Mm -hmm. And Katie's like, um, hey, wait a minute, that is your grandchild. Do you realize that? And they ended up, they adopted the baby as their own. And so that the daughter could still see the baby being raised. And later on, that turns out to be Katie's son's wife. So it gives you a different twist on certain subjects. Right. So, so tell me, just so that we make sure that the listeners get it, what do you think, what is the number one reason that you want to make readers cry? Because then I know I hit them at the core. Good. Because, you know, we're not that different because when I get hired by someone who wants me to help them write their nonfiction, I will tell them, <clears throat> I'm going to, I'm going to make you cry. And they'll go, ah! it's like, yeah, you're paying for this abuse because if I can get you to a place in your heart where you're feeling things from a core level, from a soul, heart and soul level and not just regurgitating words, mm -hmm. then your reader is going to feel that too. And I say this to people too, who are forcing themselves to write a book. They're forcing themselves to sit down and write 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 words a day or a week. And I tell them, okay, if you're unhappy when you're writing, your reader is not going to read your book because they're going to feel that. They're going to sense that. And they're not going to want to read it because there's no value to them. They may already be feeling like, you know, dog poo on the bottom of a shoe and they don't want to read that you feel that way too. Well, exactly. If there's no tears from the writer, there's going to be no tears from the reader. If there's no laughter from the writer, there will be no laughter from the reader. Um, Absolutely. Some people write, you know, for the latest genre that's out there. I don't. I write timeless. I write from the heart so that it is felt by the reader as well. Okay, so let me ask you, you say you you know, can you give me an average count or a between this page number and that page number? How long are your books usually? Um, generally between th the Grace Street Stored series is between 275 to 300 pages. The Holy Flame Trilogy is a little bit bigger. Those are between three to 400. Um, the first two books in, well, the first book actually in the Divine Legacy series is about your 275, 300, and the other two are about 400. Um, strength from within is a little about three, 350. So you what you're telling people is to write the story that needs to be told. Mm -hmm. Don't try and put a 200 page story in 300 pages or vice versa. And if you can tell it with less words, but still get the same point across, it's actually better because then you can put more story into it. You can add more depth. Um, when I went through and rewrote the strength from within, I was able to put more depth in the characters. So I actually added about a hundred pages because wow. the, the situations were more in depth. The characters, you understood a whole lot more about what was going on. So how has your writing changed since the first book till this last book? Like I said, <laughs> I rewrote them with them because it sucked. <laughs> Can you define sucked, please? <laughs> Really elemental. Um, <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> uh, basically, I had a couple authors that came up beside me. Um, one of them in particular is Carmen D'Souza. She is an amazing author. She is my content editor. When she actually edits, 
it's like she's looking over my shoulder on the little comment side and some of those paragraphs are like massively long like <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> and girl so what are you thinking exactly like are you serious this isn't going to work um, <laughs> there's no way this would happen, you know? And so she actually helped me develop into a much better author. So when I finished the series is, like I said, I went back and looked at strength from within and I thought, you know, th this character is got no depth. Um, the other characters don't, it, it doesn't, it went too fast. The manipulation went too fast. I needed to slow that down, pull it back. Um, and it just allowed me to, like I said, go deeper into the characters and discover more about them. As an author and as a writer, like I said, I'm a people watcher. And so I love diving into why somebody is the way that they are. And when I wrote Strength and Within, I was nowhere near where I should have been. <laughs> and so when I started diving further and Carmen pushed me further, I was able to give more of the reasons as to why they are the way they are. So if somebody's thinking, you know, I got a story to tell. I think that I can help these people or these kinds of people or help in these situations. And they're trying to decide to write fiction or nonfiction. What are, what's your advice and what would you, how would you tell them to start? Okay. I actually just had the situation with an author, author and she had written the nonfiction version. And I said, did you get people to sign that it was okay to put them into your book if they were in a bad light because you could get sued? And she said, no, I didn't. And I said, you may want to consider doing it fiction then. And so what she decided to do is she's going to do short stories with different characters, same situations. That saves the liability against her. Right. Um, and liability is a huge issue and people don't think about that. And I had a client who wrote the whole, her whole book. And from the very beginning, the very first meeting, I told her, you need to change the names. You need to change the names to protect the innocent and the not so innocent, but you need to change the name. To protect the innocent and the guilty. <laughs> yeah. And so her response was, no, my family, we've gotten over it. It's all good now. Everything's great. So we got the book published. We were, we had planned a, in-person book release and two days before that release was supposed to happen after we did all the marketing online, you know, in pay newspapers, et cetera, et cetera, put up flyers all over town. A family member came to her and said, basically, if you use my name or any of my family's name in your book, I'm going to sue you. Mm -hmm. And it's there's like, something, so, there's something different about seeing it in print and everybody knowing whether the family's gotten through it or not. That's different. That's within the family unit. When you're putting it in a book, you are blowing yeah. it out. Yeah. So you have to change, you have to change the names. You maybe change the relationships. You maybe change the location that something happened. Change Even the if gender. the story you're change. telling is a, do what? Change the gender, change the race, change the location. There's a lot of things you can do to disguise that. Yeah, and even in nonfiction, mm -hmm. that's doable. So you're still telling the story, but there's a way to change the name and the location where the event happened. Even if you're telling a good story about a good place, you don't want to. You don't want to try and. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do part of this and part of this. You have to across the board make little tweaks. The story is still the same. The heart and soul impact is still the same. It's just the name and the location. And so I guess we're agreeing on that. Exactly. And when you're dealing with nonfiction versus fiction, you know, with fiction, you can tell people, look, it's fiction. If it resembles somebody, that's not on me. People are people yep. at the core. When you're dealing with nonfiction, you don't really have that luxury because people, right. know, people know those other people. And like I said, people don't like their dirty laundry aired, whether they're over it or not. And yeah, so exactly. Issue. So that's, that's something that I know you have to face when you're teaching people to do the nonfiction ones. So I give you a lot of credit for that because that's not something I want to deal with. Yeah, it, it, it can be difficult. So I got a few more questions, but first of all, can we talk about your sister? Shh. She's probably <laughs> listening. 
<laughs> oh no. Okay. Well, let's talk about your wonderful sister. Actually, I love your sister. I do. She's um, the best sister in the world. I tell people. Well, give us her name and then tell us about, you all are working together to publish books, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Her name is Ellen Mann. Uh, her books are mostly for younger readers, middle grade and below. So you can find her stuff at mannwrites.com, M-A-N-N-W-R-I-T-E-S.com. Um, yes, we are sisters. I was the first one published and she'll tell you I'm the one that kicked her in the behind to get her to publish her book. And I'm still kicking her behind five years later to try it, or six years later to get her to write the sequel. <laughs> to oh gosh. Writing, which she hasn't done yet. Um, but she does have a lot, quite a lot out for younger readers. She just came out with a book called Magic Cats. Um, and it's really, really cute. Um, I just came out with the Chief and Sarge book, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. That's my next question. Yep. <laughs> That's in there. Um, and, but we started a publishing company in December of last year and we titled it Texas Sisters Press. We started it. What else? Yeah, you know, right? Um, we started it because we wanted to give authors a fair shot. There are a lot of companies out there that try to rip authors off. I mean, badly. Like we've run across people who were are charged 3,500 to 20,000. And yes, I'm being serious. I cringed at that. So please tell yes. me you did not sign the contract. We're tired of authors getting ripped off. The stories need to get out. Obviously they were given that story for a reason. They need to get it out and we're here to help them. So we're, we normally will look after our authors as family. You know, as Texas sisters, we're part of the family. When you come ours, we're putting our brand behind you. We give you marketing and branding advice and kind of Good. get you started in the right direction because we're putting us behind you. Um, we have signed three authors so far since we opened Ooh. up in August to other authors. We kind of experimented on ourselves. Um, we published all of the books. Uh, we did Lydia's too. Um, this is the first one that was an actual altogether right out start book. It was actually Magic Cats and then this one. Um, Chief and Sarge are... Wait, wait, wait. Don't talk about Chief. No, no, don't bring up Chief. First, look, tell people. I know you get so excited and I do I too. I do. I but love them. Tell people, are, are you taking submissions or how can people find out about your publishing and whether you might be a right fit? Can you tell them how to do that? Yes. Uh, first of all, the best guideline that I tell people is if our 88-year-old mother can read it and not blush, then we're usually okay. <laughs> family friendly. We also want quality, which is the other reason why we started the company, because a lot of times I was an indie author. I get it. Um, they try to cut corners in different parts, but it's obvious and it actually hurts the author world. So we put out quality books for the families, regardless Absolutely. of you know, ages, various ages. Um, you can find us at texassisterspress.com, T-E-X-A-S-S-I-S-T-E-R-S-P-R-E-S-S.com. Um, okay. you Are you publishing out. mostly, mostly nonfiction? No. Oh, That's girl, it. we need to talk. <laughs> yeah. No, we publish across the board. Um, Sci-fi, Christian fiction, nonfiction, we have... A gentleman who's got like a basically a reference book more or less it's about like bible he was a um, missionary for several years and his is massive but we're publishing his his the nonfiction. we have a sci-fi book that we just signed an author for and then we have another children's book author that we just signed so Ooh, yeah that's great so you all can contact me arlene gale g-a-l-e four letters who i and it's I found out that you can spell it like 400 ways, but it's G-A-L-E. And you can go to my website, bookwritingbusiness.com, sign up for some of my freebies under the freebie tab. And I've got a free webinar coming up, I think next week, but find out when the next one is and register for that. It's, it's an hour and it's free and you'll learn some good stuff to help you figure out how to get started and do it in the right way. And then when you write a book with me, then I'm going to send you to CJ and L. L, it's L M man, L N L M man, man. Yeah. M A N N and Texas sisters press. Mm -hmm. So let's do the drum roll. So now tell us about your newest kids book. I will with one more little exception Okay. Um, regarding Texas sisters press. Just if you go there and you have a book and you have an idea of what you want to do, or you've got it written, we like to get them fully edited 
even if you're not to the editing stage, you can fill out the submission form and it will come to me and we'll set up, what we do is we set up a Zoom meeting with each author because each author's need is different. We try right. to figure out where they are, where we can help them. Regardless if we sign you or not, we're going to try to help you out because cool. that's how we would want to be treated. Now, Sheep and Sarge. <laughs> Who are they? Sheep and Sarge. Chief and Sarge, and they are? Chief is a stuffed koala. Sarge is a stuffed monkey. Um, I am not normally a children's author, as you can see the fact that I have 13 books out that are kind of young adult, adult age. Um, it was a complete and utter accident, happy accident. Um, we started taking these pictures with this little monkey because he was cute. I collected monkeys and people fell in love with Sarge. And I'm like, well, Sarge needs a little brother. So we did Chief. But we take them on adventures, like real life adventures, things that you know kids love to explore. For example, the USS Kid. Because they're stuffed animals, they can go into the little nooks and crannies where kids aren't supposed to go into, and we take their pictures. Okay. And what we've done is people love it so much, um, we started converting the real life adventures into storybooks. For example, cruising. We literally took them on cruises. They were in my backpack, lots of comments. I gave away so many cards and they met so many people. My husband even took them down the water slide. There's a video of them each going down the water slide where he held the animal in front of him and the camera behind him. And he took them down the water slide. And so what age is this book for? Would you say? Uh, usually first to third, maybe you can get away with fifth. There's some fun facts in the back of the books. Um, so it allows, you know, pretty much any age, kind of the younger version, elementary school age kids to enjoy it. Some of the other kids, because the pictures are adorable, they can do it. But we literally take the real life pictures and my illustrator cartoons them. That's cool. So I'm assuming that this is on Amazon and they can also find it on your website, right? Yep, they can find it on cjpetersonwrites.com on the homepage underneath new releases or for Chief and Sarge to check them out. They can go under the Chief and Sarge tab, C-H-I-E-F-A-N-D-S-H-R-G-E. Um, there's even pictures. We went to JJ, the boss's arm drop, which is drag racing, the beginning of August. And there's pictures of him, of Chief and Sarge with all of the racers. So cool. yeah, they're just, they're fun. Cool. So we're getting close to the end here. So oh, um, I do this with all, I know time goes so fast. Um, I want to put you on the hot seat. So are you ready? This um, is my favorite part. Sure. <laughs> After all you've been through, this is easy. So let's start with this. A mindset, and we, we are close on time, so we need little, little answers. Um, what is a mindset when you first started writing that could have stopped you in your tracks if you hadn't done what? Basically, even just putting it out, because you're putting out a part of your heart. That's your baby. So what would people think? And, and that's, that's something that, I'd come at. And so how did you deal with that? How did you overcome the, what would, what would people think part? I overcame it because when my husband and I published the books, we didn't publish them for money. We published them because the messages inside the books would help people. So people either love my books or they hate them. There's not normally an in-between and I've just come to accept that fact. Okay. So, you know, follow your heart, write what you know, and don't worry about the money. I always tell people when somebody says they don't get you, you just look at them and smile and you say, thank you, because they've just done you a huge favor. They told you, you don't have to waste your time and money marketing to them because they're not in your target market. Yep. And so, the book isn't meant for them. Yeah, exactly. They, they've got other books that are meant for them, not these. So the next question is, what is a positive mindset that you have that is really useful in your success? When the books come out, I tend to look at the first 20 or so. Sometimes I'll look a little bit more. If there's a review where my book actually touched the person's heart, I will save that review and I have them up on boards around me. So those days where I'm like thinking, this is horrible, why am I even doing this? Those reviews are the ones that help me go, okay, I'm writing it for this person. Right. Yeah. Cause they're the person that you were meant to touch. Mm -hmm. So you focus on the positive, you focus on the 80, 90% of people who do get you that you are helping and you bless and release the other percentage that just are never going to understand or yeah, need you. Send them away with the Texas bless your heart. <laughs> bless your heart bless, yes. your heart bless your heart okay great so this is my last hot seat question 
what is one little golden nugget takeaway or action step that you could give the listeners if they're thinking about writing their story, but they don't know where to start? Okay. Uh, my sister and I actually just did uh, the North Texas Book Festival. We were the featured authors. Cool. And what we did is on my website underneath the media and about you page is a video that says North Texas Book Festival. And what we talked about is you have to start somewhere. You know, you got to start somewhere. Whether you put out a book that sucks like I did with the first book and kind of go from there and you can go back and rewrite it, you got to start somewhere. You just got to write it, get it down. People are like, well, I don't know where to start with a story. You can't build a sandcastle until you get sand in the box. Right. You, know, you get the sand in the box, then you build the basic castle, which is your first draft, and then you can detail it later, take away things, put it, things back. You got to start somewhere. Get that sand in the box first. Well, and I think you've mentioned several times, you know, writing feels like a very isolationist, do it by yourself project, but <clears throat> I highly recommend a great editor because mm -hmm. your editor will keep you on the straight and narrow. Your editor will, you know, a good editor will say, girl, what were you thinking? Those first four chapters are trash, throw them away and start here. Mm -hmm. What do you say about that? Copy and content. There are two sides to that. Content is the one that says, hey, you screwed up, pull that out. My copy, my content editor literally told me this chapter doesn't need to be here or put it in here a certain way if there are certain things that have to be in here. And I did it as a prologue instead and pulled a lot of about half of it away. The copy editor is the one that makes sure that your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed and you're using the right then, than, and which is my biggest mistake. <laughs> and that you don't have too many that's throughout it. And that's what it is. The other thing is cover. People do judge your book by the cover. Yes. So you cannot skimp on editors and you cannot skimp on the cover or your story will be worthless and no one will read it. They can't get through it. Absolutely. And that hits on something that I preach is that a book can build your credibility. It can connect you with people or it can damage your credibility and repel you from people. Because if what you publish, especially it's true in the nonfiction world is if what you publish is the best that you've got to offer your potential clients, your target market, and they look at this and they go, ew, that's the best they've got to offer. That's the best clothing they could put on themselves for this blind date, this first meeting. They're going to go, nah, I don't want anything to do with that. I mean, that's why I rewrote Strength From Within because it was bad. And I'm like, nope, I need to rewrite it. But the thing is, is that what, you know, what I would take away from that or ask other people to take away is you have the courage to start mm -hmm. and then take the next step and then write the next book and the next book. And then you stopped and went back and looked at that. And as you go, you know, if we're doing things right, we're smarter today than we were yesterday or the day before or the day before. So there's no shame in going back and reworking something because you know more now than you did when you started. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Like I said, you got to start somewhere. If you don't start, you're never going to go. People sometimes, cool. there are usually two types of people. There are the jumpers or the researchers. The researchers research the tar out of everything and never do that leap of faith. And then there are the jumpers who kind of go, hey, I'm going to jump in both feet and make the mistakes as I go and see what happens. And I'm kind of more of a jumper. Um, for those researchers, go ahead and research it, but you still got to start writing. Got to start writing. And even if you do throw away the first three or four chapters because they're more for you and it's a warm up act to build your confidence, that's okay. Because if you've got another four or five or six chapters written, that's okay. You're writing a book. You just got to take it one word, one chapter, one page, one chapter at a time. So yeah. if you really, really want to write your story in a way that's going to impact the world and make a difference, then I think what CJ and I are telling you is you absolutely can make the choice first to write your story and second to write it, decide if you want to use it as nonfiction or if you want to write it as fiction. And hopefully in this time together, you've seen that either way, it's not about right or wrong. It's just different and get up and do something because if you don't share your brilliance with the world, they're never going to know you exist. And, you know, I've got a friend who tells me, how dare you hide that from the rest of the world? <laughs> right? Well, somebody needs to hear your story. You know, somebody Absolutely. needs to hear, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. If it's nonfiction, somebody may need to hear your story or know how you got from A to Z. 
if it's fiction, you know, they may need to see something from a different perspective to be like, oh gosh, I'm not alone. And people don't understand that. They're like, well, I'm too afraid. What if somebody doesn't like it? People aren't going to like it. They don't like every radio station either. You know, somebody's not going to like it and that's okay. Yeah. You have to yeah. be okay with okay. Mm -hmm. So CJ, I just really want to thank you so much for your time and your talent and your heart today. Um, if there's ever anything I can do to help you, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And people, whether you want to write fiction or nonfiction, um, you've got two experts sitting right here who spent the hour with you. So don't hesitate to reach out. I I'm going I'm to tell you, don't hesitate to reach out to me, bookwritingbusiness.com. What say you? Quick. Definitely. Uh, CJPetersonWrites.com. You can feel free to email me at CJPetersonWrites at yahoo.com. And I'll be happy awesome. to email you. I'm always on the email. Um, if you have a book that you want to check out or maybe try to see, hey, if will this work? Go to texassistorspress.com, fill out a submission awesome. form, and we'll get back with you. Awesome. So until next time, my listeners, please listen. Be mindful to the stories you tell yourself about what is or is not possible for you. Don't let anyone else dictate your story. Only you have the power to choose how to and when to master your success. And if you're ready to write your story, you can reach me, Arlene Gale, at bookwritingbusiness.com. So until next week, go live your life and then write about it. Thank you for joining Mindset Meets Mastery with Arlene Gale, the expert in helping people write stories to build and expand their business. Join us every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll talk more about how mindsets can help or hinder our success. Until then, be mindful of the stories you tell yourself about what is or is not possible. Don't let the world dictate your success. And please visit bookwritingbusiness.com to grow your business by telling your professional or personal story.